Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's video we're going to be drawing this jog eye study in coloured pencil so if you want to know how to draw realistic fur and eyes then this is going to be for you. As always all of the materials and everything that I've used for this are listed in the description below and if you want to watch the full real time version it is available as a full tutorial over on my Patreon page and on my website. I'll leave the links to both so you can go and check them out if you fancy following along with this. And if you fancy following a free tutorial then make sure that you sign up to my newsletter. The link to that is also in the description. As soon as you sign up a full two and a half hour tutorial of a tiger I will be delivered straight to your inbox and if you stay subscribed then you also eventually get a free leopard eye tutorial as well but let's get straight into today's video okay so one of the first things I did was actually draw the outline and if you are interested in finding out exactly how I get my outline I use the grid method I will leave a link down below and as a link up above for a video that I've previously created on using the grid method so if anybody struggling with the outlines that's going to be for you the first thing i do is just start to add in the sort of whites of the eye and a lot of people think that the whites of the eye are just white but there's actually quite a few colors that go into this so i actually added in some purple some manganese violet um, some light flesh and i toned it with some ivory blended with an ivory pencil as well and in the actual inner eye corner it's quite dark and a lot of people often think that you need to put down like really dark dark colours but in fact this is actually made up of some really pink tones because if you look at the insides of our eyes they're often really pink and it's the same with dogs but it's just like a really toned down version so I actually went in with some Caput Mortem violets, some purples, I blended a little bit with that light flesh colour and just made sure that everything was really nice and smooth and to add in the highlights I just kind of used a negative space method and went around the white areas and I also used a little bit of a white gel pen to really highlight some of the sort of really pin pricked details of the highlight within that little area but I tried to avoid using as many dark colours as possible obviously I did go in and I did use some walnut brown and some dark sepia but initially you just want to layer with some of those reds and purples for the underlying tones that's a really important step to to take and the same with the outer corner of the eye as well I did the same there and then I just started to go into the iris of the eye which is my favorite part and this eye contains some really bright oranges as you can see I've put down some really really bright yellows bright oranges to begin with and all I'm doing is just using the white pencil I'm using a Prismacolor white to just make sure that everything is nice and blended and smooth so the way that I do that is I use tiny little circular motions when I'm laying down my pencils and also when I'm um, blending with that white pencil that just helps to make it look really nice and smooth and enables you to build on that glassy look so I always start with light colors and work my way to darker colors so I started with those light yellows and oranges those really bright ones and then started to fill in some of the shadows with some darker colors so the shadows mainly fall around the outside of the eye where the eyelids are kind of overcoming the eye a little bit so I just added in some Caput Mortem Violet, some Walnut Brown, some Terracotta, some Dark Oranges and Browns to really build up the shadows there. And again, just blended those with the white pencil to make sure they were really nice and smooth and blended out into the lighter colours of the eye. For some of the shadows and some of the highlights and like reflections that you can see on the surface of the eye, there were quite a lot of green reflections which I presume were from the background of the reference photo. So I added in some green tones and I also added in some purple because that really makes the oranges sing. So if you layer oranges and purples next to each other, they really work together and make each other brighter. So I added in some purple tones around the outer edges of the eye to really make those inner orange and yellow tones sing and I also added in a tiny little bit of blue to help do the same for the yellows as well. For the highlight of the eye I just started off with some light base colours. I believe I used some sky blue and I also used some delft blue as well and kept the layers really really light using the pencil on the side and then blending out with the white to really desaturate and um, 
make those colors seem a little bit more paler and then I just slowly built up the layers using the same colors and then eventually getting to some darker colors and um, just using a little bit more pressure on the lighter colors as well can often help just to create a darker color and just keep blending with that white pencil to make everything really nice and smooth until you're ready to add in some finer details so as you can see I'm adding in some reflections of some tree branches and the actual eyelashes of the dog and everything I'm just using a dark sepia pencil and I'm also using dark indigo to add in that to the reflection so I'm using the dark indigo because there's some like blue areas reflected and using a dark indigo pencil just helps to accent the kind of blue of the highlight as well as adding in the dark sort of intricate areas that you can see within the highlight there and that pretty much completes the iris I also added in some areas of white gel pen again just to help really accent some of those super super white details and um, those really really shiny moments within the eye they're really difficult to capture with just pure colored pencil you can use something like a scalpel or something to etch away the colored pencil as well but I like to use a white gel pen because it just gives a really nice opaque covering it's instant and it gives really really good impact so that's what I used there then for the eyelids around the dog eye here, so the colour of the Labrador that I'm doing is a brown fur and often brown furs have like these kind of fleshy undertones so to begin with here I just used some light flesh and built up with some terracotta, same kind of colours that I used throughout the eye, um, some Caput Morton Violet for some of the darker areas and just really slowly built those up using a light pressure and making sure that I keep the tone even as well. So I'm using the side of the pencil to help keep that tone even, blending out with some of the lighter colours and the white to keep everything really nice and smooth because the area around the outside of the eye is like skin. So so you want to try and keep it as smooth as possible and not really add too much texture. So just use some light flesh, Caput Morton Violet, a little bit of purple here and there, blending with that white to keep the colours really nice and light and blended and then just started to add in the fur. So for the fur around the eye, I added in the same base layers and the same colors that I added for the skin around the eye. So again, just going in with that light flesh, building in some orange colors, and then building in some shadows by using some Caput Morton Violet, some of the Manganese Violet. I also added in a touch of green here and there just to help desaturate some of the colors. Um, and then just use some walnut brown and some darker colours like some burnt sienna is a really good one for brown fur and adding in some orange tones as well but again like I did with the eye I'm adding in a lot of purple tones because those purple tones really help the orange tones sing and it really brings it to life so if you go through and don't add any purple it's fine but you'll find that if you do add a bit of purple to your oranges it really does make a whole world of difference so there's one tip I have for you there is partner your orange areas with some purple because it really will help so the fur I'm just building with some really smooth base layers of some light flesh, just using the side of the pencil, keeping the tone and pressure really smooth. Then going on to a slightly darker color, like some cinnamon to add in a little bit of shadow and then using some Delft blue, um, some of that manganese violet to just build in some shadows and then going in with some darker colors so for the darker colors i'm actually using a fur technique and i do have a video on my youtube channel explaining exactly how i do my fur technique so if you want to check that out i will leave that linked as a card up above and in the description for you as well but basically you just want to put some firm pressure down on your pencil at the beginning of the fur line work in the direction of the fur and then as you're working towards the end of that particular fur you're just going to lift the pencil off the paper so release the pressure and you want to do it nice and quickly so you get this nice flicking motion which will give you a really nice natural effect but for the rest of the fur on this little brown dog eye study all I'm doing is just starting off with those lighter colors building in some oranges where you've got some darker depths of shadow and a little bit more of that kind of brown tone showing through with the dog then using some of those purples to really accent that going through with some burnt sienna and then going in darker with some walnut brown even a little bit of dark sepia here and there just to really darken up some of the shadows but as you can see here as well I've added in some green which just helps to kind of bring a little bit of a grayscale effect to the to 
the oranges and it just helps to dull them down and just get some really good natural looking shadows without using some dark colours. So if you partner greens with oranges it often tones them down and acts as if you're adding a shadow which is a really good way instead of adding the dark colours because dark colours can often muddy so if you're looking for a partner for some shadows use green. So purples for really accent accenting the oranges and greens for really kind of grayscaling them down and I just repeat this whole process of using those lighter colours making sure I use a shading motion to begin with for the base layers for the skin underneath the fur and then as you're getting up to those darker colours you're using that fur technique to really add that texture in and you want to make sure that you when you're using your darker colours that you don't cluster them too close together otherwise you're going to just end up with a dark patch so as you get darker with your colours you want to get less with your pencil strokes if that makes sense so the really dark colour you're only going to have a few strands off but the lighter colour you're going to have like covering the whole area so that you can see the skin underneath and that's pretty much it some small tips for this dog eye study as always thank you guys so much for watching if you haven't done so already please hit that subscribe button and tick that notification bell we're now on our way to 25k and i'd love to have you along for the journey you beautiful bean and i will catch you guys in the next tutorial video bye won't stop for traffic lights